This is a time we need to ascend. We not only need to press through. Many people want to just put their head down and press through. No. The Lord is saying lift your head and come up hither. Not in pride. Lift your eyes to the hill from which comes your help. Every day you don't get what you've done. He showed you mercy. And it's new every day. And you dare worship anyone but him. And by him I mean Jesus. Lord and Savior, Yahshua HaMashiach, Yahweh, the only living God. Good day, beloved, and thank you for joining me today on Preach, Be A Voice, Out of Echo Ministry. For those of you who do not know me, I'm Ambassador Chantrell Davis, and that is according to 2 Corinthians and in obedience to the Holy Spirit, verse 5 and 20. Now then, we beseech you, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us. We pray you in his stead to be reconciled. And if you belong to Christ, you are an ambassador. And this is very important because you are an ambassador to the kingdom. That means you have direct communication and contact with the government of the country by which you derive. And that is our Lord and Savior Christ Jesus. Um, those of you who have been following me long enough know I stopped loading up, uh, uh, putting the time and date on these videos because the Lord would have me load them up so randomly, but they are very relevant for whatever time I load them up in obedience. And so, uh, short of it being a direct frame of word that he has me load up that day because it's that important or I dream in a vision, uh, I will only put dates on these things as the Lord leads because I don't have to prove I said it first. You just gonna know by the Spirit of God. A lot of these things have been recorded. I I've loaded up messages that uh, took a whole year before he had me uh, to load them up, and they were right on time. And that's why I no longer longer put the time on them unless it is a rhema word like the one in, for Miss Pelosi and different things that uh, I had to do that I had to record. I had to drop everything and do right then. Uh, that is very important. Um, but uh, I am going to say a quick prayer today. So I want you to bring your hearts and mind together in one accord, for there is no time and there is no space by way of the Spirit. Any day that this message is played, you will be able to reap the benefits of coming together in one accord. And uh, those of us who are agreeing is touching that anything we ask in the name of Jesus, for we know we pray according unto his will. So he gives us, he, he hearkens unto the voice of his word as God, uh, of the word of God, the angels do, and he hastens to perform his word as we come together in agreement. And even as you decree it from your home, because you are in agreement with the Holy Spirit by agreement, uh, agreeing with his words. So that is your touching as well. But let's go forth toge uh, together in one mind and one heart in the name of Christ Jesus. Heavenly Father, I want to thank you that we are alive for such a time as this. Dear God, I thank you that we are awake because you sustained us, Father God. I thank you for your fortifying words, your rhema right now word, Father God. You are beautiful. You are lovely. You are holy. You are just, Father God. You are righteous, Father God. In the name of Jesus, you are our redeemer. We thank you, Father God, for there is none like you. You are the rock of ages in the lily of valley. You are the ancient of days, Father God, the high and lofty one. We thank you, Father God, that you are our redeemer, our stabilizer, regulator of our mind, stabilizer of our emotion, Father God. You are the one who upholds us with your righteous right hand, Father God. You are the lifter up of our head. You are our keeper, our teacher our leader, our God. We thank you for awakening us this day, Father God, and we thank you that we are sustained by the word of your power. So we thank you for the power of your word and the word of your power. Father God, we pray to be renewed in the spirit of our mind, Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, Father God. We thank you that we speak right words in due season and how forcible these right words are. For we yield to the Holy Spirit that is the paraclete that resides within us. Holy Spirit, we acknowledge you and who you are, the leader, the guider, and the teacher, and the sifter, the giver of gifts, and the homer of those spiritual gifts. We, we, we acknowledge you, and you are, welcome to in, you are welcome in every area of of our life in every chamber of our home in the name of Jesus Christ in every portal of our being you are welcome every doorway of our soul you are welcome Holy Spirit overshadow us with the power and the glorious power of God Father God in the name of Jesus Father God we thank you for a right mind we thank you for right words in due season Father God we thank you that we are renewed in the spirit of our mind through one Christ Jesus Father God we thank you that we are holy we are acceptable we are blameless and unreprovable in your sight Father God we thank you for the authority we have in Christ Jesus Father God we thank you that we are more than conquerors through Christ Father God in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you that you always cause us to triumph. And faithful are you who called us, who also will do all things you commanded us, Father God. So we will only be strong and of a good courage according unto your word, Father God. We rest in you, our Sabbath. We rest in you, our Jubilee. But, Father God, we take authority. We occupy according to your word, Father God. For you have given us dominion over the whole earth, Father God. To occupy and to hold within limits, to sustain it, Father God. To multiply in the name of Jesus Christ, Father God. And we thank you for the power that we operate there with by way of your Holy Spirit, Father God. We thank you, Father God, that no weapon formed against us will prosper every tongue rising against and judgment is already condemned, Father God. We put the fire wall up around us, Father God, and plead the blood of Jesus, Father God, in the atmosphere, Father God. 
And let the burden remove and yoke destroy the Lord go forth against every opposing force and dynamic power, Father God. In the name of Jesus, every mouth that is risen, Father God, we decree those words will not stand, neither shall they come to pass, Father God. We thank you, Father God, in the name of Jesus, that your will will be done this earth. So we say, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven, Father God. In the name of Jesus, we thank you that you have made us a fortified brazen wall and you have set our face like flint. We thank you for the wellspring of wisdom, Father God, and out of our mouth flows uh, words of life, Father God, words of reproof, words of correction, Father God, all unto edification, Father God. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, Father God, that we don't fight as one box on the earth, Father God, but we have definite targets, Father God. So we thank you, Father God, for the knowledge to shoot the power in the right direction, the knowledge, Father God, to hone the power in the right direction, Father God, to bring all things, Father God, every high thought, every lofty thing that exalts itself against your true knowledge, we lead it away captive and we command it to submit to Christ, Father God. Thy kingdom come and thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven, Father God. We thank you, Father God, that no weapon formed against us will prosper, Father God. In the name of Jesus, we thank you that we always triumph in Christ Jesus, Father God. We thank you, Father God, that it is well with us, Father God, well with our home, well with our soul, we prosper and we are in good health even as our soul prospers, Father God. We thank you that your plans for us are good and not evil, plans of hope, future, and expected end. So we decree your expected end over all that concerns us, Father God, and all those connected to our destinies, Father God, our family, Father God, our marriages, our business, Father God, our life, our destiny, Father God, and all that you've called and ordained us to do. We thank you, Father God, that your expected end shall be done. So we decree and declare, Father God, overridden, Father God, every time said that the enemy by the set time of the Lord, Father God. For we stay in obedience, Father God, we stay on the path, Father God, for your word is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path, Father God. So we stay lit, Father God, by taking in your word, Father God. We thank you, Father God, that we don't stumble in the dark as the heathen, neither are we dismayed, Father God. So we thank you for the power that operates in us, Father God. Awaken us a pure heart and a pure mind that we have pure expression, Father God. Even this day, Father God, purely express to me, Father God, the word of God by way of your Holy Spirit, Father God. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare understanding. I decree and declare great receptivity, Father God. I decree that these words, Father God, will accomplish the thing word, word to their sin, Father God, that will not return to be void, for they are your words, Father God, in the name of Jesus, Father. And I thank you they will prosper thereby. In the name of Jesus, Father God, they will receive fruit, and the fruit will remain, Father God. I decree it will go forth unhindered and unchecked by the outside force, Father God. And every opposing power I bind in the name of Jesus Christ. Every dynamic force, Father God, I bind, I dismantle. I decree the mischief they plan, they will not be able to perform, Father God. And the words they have spoken shall not stand, neither shall they come to pass, Father God. I thank you that they prosper. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your truth. Thank you for life, love, and liberty in the name of Christ Jesus. I thank you and I seal this prayer and I say amen. Okay, let me get right into this because I'm telling you this is, I got a lot to record y'all. It's nothing new about that. But I have to take the breaks as the Lord would lead me. This message I had typed out a while ago. Um, I don't know how, how many times to really stress not only discerning of the spirit, but discerning of the time we are in. The times of the Lord. That means the movements of the Lord. That is the timing of the Lord. When you are out of timing, you are out of alignment, you are out of order, you are in the darkness. But not only that, when the Lord moves everything, every person, every place that is not in alignment with his movement will have adverse experiences. The earth, uh, even in your life, because you've been going your own way, and when the Lord is moving, you're over here. You're not in alignment with him. And you're going to... Uh, you're going to experience adverse uh, consequences. You're going to you're going to you're going to get a facet of him that is, was not his intent. His intent for you is goodness. His word tells you that. Um, so you must understand not just the time uh, discerning of spirits, but the discerning of the times of the Lord, uh, the season and the happenings of the Lord. That's the time and the chance, the season and season and the happenings of the Lord. Most of the time, the Lord, the enemy can keep many people off literally. Uh, by getting them out of time with the Lord, getting them to go their own way, getting them not to hurt, getting them distracted, getting their attention on something else so they miss the move or that they're not spending time with the Lord so that they're in tune uh, with his hearing, uh, with his moving. Their hearing is not in tune with his moving. And so the enemy could get a lot of people just by getting them off in that manner. Okay? So we've entered a different time. You know, there was a particular scripture I was going to start with because there's so many places I could start with this because it's such a serious word. Uh, and this is the time we are in. And I had to add this scripture because the, the, the Holy Spirit is the writer of the word because the word of God tells us that the, the word of God was written by holy men that were, uh, as they were inspired by the Holy Spirit, that were holy men of God moved upon by the Holy Spirit, right? He's still moving now. Do y'all think people, where do y'all think all these messages come from and songs and writings and books? Because he's still speaking. Just like at one point they didn't have the Bible. They didn't have the Bible till uh, men, men of God were moved. And by men, men or women, men of God were moved because there were holy poets, 
poems because we I go to the scripture all day where he said if everything that Jesus did was written by everybody, there would not be enough books in the world to contain it. He's still writing. And this is writing. It ain't, it's not always about books. These messages, we, even though he is having me print them all out. And I got a, uh, y'all saw that video. They each like this. And I probably need about three, four more of them right now because I have not printed out the other ones. Uh, yeah. But he's still speaking. And uh, as time go, grows shorter, he has to deal with things, people, and situations differently. Why? Because of the time. Because his word is going to be fulfilled. His promises are going to be fulfilled no matter what. There is a hastening. Just like we're speaking up in the spirit, there is a hastening in the movement of the Lord. There is a hastening in the spirit realm. And that means even those of you who have went contra, there will be a hastening in your correction. It's no different. I've told you this before. When you got kids over playing and both of the kids did something stupid, but your kid... You're going to get tell that kid that came over because ain't nobody going to send kids over your house and you're a corrective parent. If you got a problem with somebody correcting your child, don't send them to my house. But you're going to deal with your kid different. And it's likewise. You know, the heathens do what they do. And the rebellious get his wrath and we you can get his chastisement. But when time is starting to run out and you, the Lord has knocked you back and knocked you back and knocked you back and you still go in your own direction. Don't y'all know when he said he's married to the backslider, that if he have to break you down, he will save you. Don't be one of those that have to be broken down. Don't be one of those that he got to let get broke down for you to give him that E flat or that C flat to sing, to, to give him the praise that's due to him. Don't let him have to break you down to get you to make that sound, which is the praise of him and your worshipful sound and your worshipful scent through obedience, a living sacrifice. Because many of you have become meat on the altar with no fire. Catch that. Many of you have become meat on the altar without fire. What happens to meat when you just leave it sitting out? You stink. But that burning flesh is a continual sweet savor. You on the altar with no, no heat, no Holy Spirit, and no yielding to the Holy Spirit, so there is no burning. So it's just meat on the altar rotting This is a different time. The pursuit of many of you are about to change. And the Lord was speaking to me. It took him a couple of days. He was elaborating this on me. And you're going to get it when I give you this title. That this is a double edge in the flesh and in the spirit. For the wicked and for the righteous. Okay? Okay? Uh, I got to get in this because I got a lot to go over. Okay? Because I usually I like to, uh, you know, the spirit, uh, he's keeping me on point. Because usually he'll just flow through me for a minute. Um, but I need to get to this word. The name of this message, beloved, is behold, the fishers and the hunters are coming. He will cause them to know that he's the cause. When I heard that, behold, the fishers and the hunters are coming. He will cause them to know that he is the cause. Now, how many of you know, say, for instance, what can I use, a, a bounty hunter and a fisherman? That when a hunter man is hunting you down because you went the wrong way, you refuse to align to justice, that that bounty hunter usually is not gentle. And this is when he gave me this other scripture. I, I think I'm going to go with it now uh, because I need to set the foundation before I go to the foundation of scripture for the hunters and the fishers, okay? No, I'm going to stay in order. Let me, let, me, let, me, let me do it just like I got it. Because I don't want to leave no scripture out. Let's start with Jeremiah 16, verse 16. Okay? You already know hunting and fishing. Completely two different sports. Completely two different ways of coming to get you. And that includes the beloved too. There's going to be hunters and fishers. But the one thing about the word hunters is some of the beloved getting hunted too. But wicked, but but evil is gonna hunt the wicked man, and that's a specific scripture. That's why they said this is two sided, okay? But it's different for each one, for the righteous versus the wicked, okay? Let me get into this message. Jeremiah sixteen sixteen. Behold, I send for many fishers. Behold, I will send for many fishers. Okay, this will tell you what time we move it in. If we're going to get the beloved, and he really brought me to understand some stuff though. Uh, I was sent for fishers, and the Lord said the Lord, and they shall fish them, okay? 
And after, 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 catch this, the fishers, then the hunters, catch this. The Lord, uh, says the Lord, and then shall, uh, and they shall fish them. Okay, let me read this. I just chopped it up. Behold, I will send for many fishers, said the Lord, and they, and they shall fish them. Okay, what do you call your fishermen? After I will send for many hunters, and they shall hunt them. From, men, for, from every mountain and from every hill and out of the holes and the rocks, all the little holes in the wall, the clubs under the rocks that you're hiding, the hunters and the fishers. The fishers are coming first. The fishers are going to deal with you a little more gentle. I want y'all to catch this. The time of the grace is coming to an end. The times of the grace, fishers, grace. But when the kingdom of heaven is being preached, the kind of stuff you saw, kingdom of heaven at hand, people smoke with blindness, turmoil, you going to know he God. He going to cause you to know that he is the cause. The fishers come first. So you're seeing some of that now, but he's going to send many fishers. Evangelists are going to go forth. The hunters, these people are moving in the power of God, whether they be apostles, prophets, seers. Y'all better pay attention to this. I'm going to keep going, okay? I'm going to read it in the Amplified Version. Behold, listen carefully, okay? I will send for many fishermen, says the Lord, and they will fish for them. And afterwards, I will send for many hunters. I mean, you got to get brought in rough. And I'm going to take you through the scripture he reminded me of this morning. And I said, oh my, because I didn't have it in there yet. I was sent for many hunters, and they will hunt them from every mountain and from every hill and out of the clefts of the rocks, okay? And I'm going to read it in the message, and I'm going to expound a little bit. Jeremiah 16, 16 through 17. Now watch for what comes next. This is a prophetic word. Behold. That means you about to behold it. Now watch for what comes next. I'm going to assemble a bunch of fishermen. Y'all going to see an abundance of the fishermen going out first. God's decree. They'll go fishing for my people and pull them in for judgment. Catch this. Judgment. This is judgment of right and wrong. Many people going to have to get corrected to receive anything in the kingdom. And some of y'all going to have to get a speedy correction because time is growing short. Okay? But he loves you enough where he'll... Boy, some... That's what that scripture means. Some... You save from a fire. That, that means you literally in a fire and you snatched out. You didn't been hunted. And it ain't going to be pretty. Okay? But he's caring more about your eternal soul than this flesh. Okay? Some of y'all loved ones. Some of y'all friends. Some people on your job. Some people you didn't pass them. This is, I want y'all to catch this. Okay? This is not only dealing with people who are already saved. People who have already received the grace and the gift of God, but they've been still doing their own thing, going their own way. Knock, 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 and they just keep going their own way. Y'all in this too. But it's for people who have yet to be brought into the kingdom. He says, seek God. Seek me first. Seek God in all his righteousness. What are we called? You are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Seek God, him, then seek all his righteousness. That's not just his ways. That's his beloved. So we won't be finding people who've been ignoring, I don't want to hear that Christ, I don't want to hear that Christian stuff, they ain't accepted Christ yet, but they are they were uh, ordained from the foundation of the earth. They were ordained from the foundation of the earth to be brought into the kingdom of God. You're going to find them too. The ones that are unsaved, but they have been ordained to this grace and to this walk. And they're going to get brought in rough. He could behold the fishers and the hunters. And he's going to cause them to know that he's the cause. And I want you to see how he played on that word. The Lord loves to play on words. I can't tell you how many messages he gave me like that. I'm going to read it again. Okay. They'll go fishing for my people and pull them in for judgment. Those who accepted Christ, that's going their own way and not obedient. And those who have yet to come in that are ordained to this. They will send, they will send out a party of hunters. And they will hunt them out in all the mountains, hills, caves. I'm watching their every move. I haven't lost track of a single one of them. Neither them nor their sin. He ain't lost a track of none of you. We already know those who have come in under Christ that he's not talking. But I told you this is for people who have yet to accept him. Yet he ain't lost track of you 
all your sins, even though sin has been covered. But that is, that's only once you've accepted the gift of the one who bore all your sin. Okay? The, ca the cause, okay, the cause, his might, and his mercy. Why? The cause, his might, and his mercy. Behold the fishes and the hunters. I will cause them to know that I'm the cause. What is the cause? His might and his mercy. Okay? Jeremiah 16, 16 through 21. Behold, I will send for many fishers, said the Lord, even though I already read this, I'm going to read it again. They shall fish them after, uh, fish them. And after, after I will send my hunters. And they shall hunt them from every mountain and from every hill and out of every hole of the rocks. That means every club, every pit, every homeless camp, every whorehouse, every uh, alcohol house, every uh, drug house, wherever you had it, and all you're seeing and whatever you're doing. Okay? Out of your beds of adultery, out of your beds of fornication, you're going to get hunt. Fish is coming first, but they're not going to deal with you the same either. I want you to catch this, okay? Uh, his eyes have seen all. I'm going just like uh, scripture for scripture. For mine eyes are up on all their ways. They are not hid from my face. Neither is there iniquity hid from mine eyes. These are the ones who have not come in. And at first, I will recompense their iniquity and their sins double. We already know those of us under Christ, we receive this. This is, I just don't like to leave scripture out. Because they have defiled my land. They have filled my, inher they have, uh, uh, filled my inheritance with the carcasses of their detestable and abominable things. This he we already know he was talking about Israel, but the Lord quickens the word to apply to what he needs. There is a literal thing and there are spiritual meanings. So don't ever think you just can don't ever lock the Lord's words into one thing. There's just no way you can do that. Because you will miss God in so many facets if you attempt to do that. And you will close the door to what he can do for you. Okay? Okay, well, abominable things. Verse 19. O Lord, my strength and my fortress and my refuge in the day of affliction. The Gentiles shall come unto thee. The Gentiles shall come unto thee from the ends of the earth and shall say, Surely our fathers have inherited lies, vanity, and things wherein there is no profit. These are people who are of the world, the heathen of the world. This is not just the people who are not uh, 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 the Hebrews or the Israelites. Those of uh, who are not yielding to the power of God in his way. Because your life without Christ is a lie. The things of this world is a lie. Uh, you trying to live without knowing Christ Jesus is a lie all in itself. And people telling you that you're born uh, perverse. And all these different things that you've been told growing up. You're going to realize that your father has inherited lies and fed you lies. Some of these people that's going to get brought in. When they, when they finally get woke up through the turmoil they're going to have to face. Okay? Making and serving no gods. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to keep going all the way to 21. Uh, yeah, wherein there is no prophet. Shall a man make gods unto himself and there are no gods? That's what the shakar, your house, your clothes, your plastic surgery, your money, whatever you spending all your time on and you reverence and above God's word, you have made it your God. Therefore, behold, I will, catch this, and then I'm going to go down the message. That's, 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 and you're going to see where I got the title. Therefore, behold, I will this once cause them to know. I will cause them to know my hand and my might. Excuse me. And they shall know that I'm the Lord. This message, behold, the fishers and the hunters are coming. He will cause them to know. Why? He's going to cause the people they hunting to know that he is the cause. And because I know it's only so much I can do with that title. Okay, I'm going to keep going down because I'm setting the foundation. Okay. He will cause you to know his hand and his might. He's going to cause them to know his hand and his might. Jeremiah 16 verse 21. Therefore, behold, I will cause them to, oh, I, is this the same one I just read? I'll be chopping this stuff up, y'all, to put this in my parts and still separate it. Therefore, behold, I will, this one has caused them to know, I will cause them to know my hand and my might, and they shall know that my name is the Lord, okay? These are some uh, grace nuggets I made here, and I usually do that for a reason what I'm doing. As many, oh, Lord, it is stuff you put me in mind of. Basically, what you're about to find out, the fishers and the hunters. Some of y'all going to be hunting. Some of y'all going to be fishing. Then I'm going to go down to the scripture and explain that to you before I come back up. 
as many grannies used to say, that child don't believe fat beats greasy. Now, if y'all culture enough, y'all know what that means. He gonna have to show you he God. He gonna have to show you he truly see you. He gonna have to show you that he see everything you do. He gonna have to show you that he's heard everything you said. He gonna have to show you that your way ain't the right way. And he gonna have to show you that even though he's long suffering, don't think he don't have power and when enough is enough. Yes, there's a holy chastisement coming even to his children. Okay? Bullet two, you only know something or someone by experience with it. So he finna cause you to know him by the experience you about to have with him. Okay? Prepare to experience the might of God. These are notes I make when I'm typing and I hurt. Okay? Not only mighty events, mighty happenings, whether it's individual in the earth, you're going to see mighty events. Okay? And the last note before I got to the scripture, evil shall hunt the violent and wicked man. I told you it was two kinds of hunting. Behold, the fishers and the hunters are coming. And I mean masses of them. There ain't going to be no scragglers. He sent the evangelists, the fishers, and then the hunters, the ones that's coming in power. You're getting snatched out of the farm. Okay? Let me keep going. Let me, let me go down. This thing is trying to resist me a little bit, y'all. I'm going to go down to the other scripture before I break, break down the word. That's why it was very important to me. And he gave me the scripture this morning. Pursue and hunt those singed by flames of wrath. We know that those who are in Christ don't have flames of wrath, but you have a chastisement coming. The ones who have yet to come in that were called are getting singed by wrath. They're going to get singed by wrath. And the hunters are going to go get them. Because they're going to be able to, it's a, it's a whole nother power. I have to say on course, okay? I'm going to read Jude 20, verse 25. I'm going to read it in two versions, the King James and, in, and, and then in the voice uh, version, okay? But ye, beloved, building up yourself on your most holy faith, Okay, let me go back down here. Okay, Jude 20, verse 25. But ye, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith. I left that in there because a lot of people need to remember that. That's how you build yourself up on your most holy faith. Praying in the Holy Ghost. Keep yourself in the love of God. Looking for the mercy. Keep yourself in his love. And if those of you have not heard that message and then come love, it tell you all they got to come before you even start really moving in God in love. So you, it was just audio, but you really need to listen to it, okay? Keep yourself in the love of God. That's not just be walking in love. That's receiving his love. Because that's how you're able to become his love. Receive his love that you may become his love. Okay? Because the Bible says he has shed his love uh, abroad in your heart by way of his Holy Spirit. So if you stay in the Spirit, you stay in love. Okay? Looking for the mercy of the Lord Christ Jesus unto eternal life. Catch that unto. That tells you it's a process. Not, not no just once saved and that's it. It says unto. Keep yourself in the love. Keep yourself in the spirit unto eternal life. Okay? And if some have compassion, some of the fishers are going to be compassionate, make a good difference. And others say with fur, these are going to be the hunters. These are going to be the hunters. I, I could take you to scripture because I just got a flow where the other guy was over there, uh, uh, Oh, God, the, the, the leader of the land, the, the governor of the land wanted to hear him. You had this sorcerer over there trying to keep him from hearing the word of God. And he got smoked with a, a blindness for a season. And then the governor saw and fur. And he came to Christ. Some you're going to say with fur, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment, garment spotted by the flesh. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and present you faultless. Before the presence of his glory, with exceeding joy, to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty and dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen. And let's read that in the voice uh, version. Okay? You, however, should stand firm in the love of God, constructing a life within the holy faith, praying the Spirit's prayer. As you wait eagerly for the mercy of the Lord Jesus, the anointed, which leads to eternal life, keep being kind to those who waver in faith. Pursue. It's the reason I highlighted pursue. 
when I look up the word hunt, it goes at hunters and fishers, pursue those who are singed by the flames of God wrath, God's wrath, and bring them safely to him. No, they're gonna get they're gonna get singed, but you're gonna bring them safely to him, but they're gonna get hunted. The hunters and the fishers are going for it, okay? And bring them safely to him. Show mercy to others, okay? With fear, despising every garment soiled by the weakness of human flesh. You should despise a spotted garment. You are not supposed to lift up those who are contrary to the word of God. You are to love them and show compassion. Yes, there will be sharp rebuke, but you should despise and loathe that flesh that is filthy on them, okay? Not them. Not the spirit. Okay. Now to the one who can keep you upright and plant you firmly in his presence. Clean, clean, unmarked, and joyful in the light of his glory. To the one and only God, our Savior, through Jesus, the anointed, our Lord, be glory, greatness, and might, and authority, just as it has been since, just as it, just as it has been since before he created time. It was that way before he created time. The anointing was always in the earth. Why do you think he called the the uh, the devil who is now fallen the anointed cherub? Who do you think anointed him? The anointing was in the earth before he created us. The anointing has always been. Okay? He created time uh, it, 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 just as it has been since before he created time. Okay? Let me keep going. You know, I've checked this thing now since it cut off on me. Oh, my God. 30 minutes ago, you're going to get going through this thing. Okay. Oh, no. That's the last one. Why he is doing it because you have gone your own way. Uh oh Lord. Okay, I, I ain't that far off, y'all. I was like, oh my God, I, <laughs> I ain't got to have this page. He will cause you back to the uh message. Behold, the fishers and the hunters are coming. He will cause them to know that he is the cause. Now, what we're gonna do here is I'm gonna give you the definition of the word cause. He's gonna cause you to know that he is the cause, and this is a double-edged sword. Okay, you're going to recognize he's the cause. He's going to cause you to know he's the cause. Okay, so listen carefully to the definition. Definition of cause, bullet one. A justification for something existing or happening. He's going to cause you to know. You're going to know why it's happening to you once this hits. Okay, events that provide the, uh, the generative force. Events that provide the generative force that is the origin of something. You're going to know it came from him. Okay? An entity that causes events to happen. He's a spirit. Entity, whatever you want to call it. God. We know he's speaking. The God causes. Okay? He's going to cause you to know he... Excuse. He's the cause. A series of actions advancing. That means moving forward. A principle or tending toward a particular end. He said, my plans for you are good. Has a hope future to bring you to an expected end. And he didn't say there wasn't going to be no weapons or whatever he got to do. Many of us have had to go through some things before he was able to bring us in the way uh, he intended to. Uh, very few of us just walked in perfectly, not doing nothing wrong. Nobody did. Okay? But the Lord. Okay? That's why he's our Savior. Okay? To give rise to cause to happen or occur, not always intentionally. Well, we know the Lord don't do nothing no accident. But I'm still reading all the definition, okay? To cause to do, to cause to act in a specific manner. A term for any proceeding in court. Oh, yeah, okay, a cause for any proceeding in court. I can use that spiritually too. Because you are brought before the court of heaven, okay? Uh, a term for any proceeding in a court of law whereby an individual seeks legal remedy, okay? Mm, I go all the way with other state. He is. And this is another definition of cause. Cause is uh, uh, in actions and situations is what I just read. Now more meanings of the word cause. He is, because this is what cause means. A genesis. We know he's the beginning and the end. Genesis. The root. He is the root of Jesse. The origin. The seed. The mainspring. The base. The foundation. The seat. I can go with scripture on this all day. The originator. The author. The creator. The producer, the prime, the the prime mover, the maker, the wellspring, and the fountainhead. This is the definition of the word cause. But so was the other words I just read. A justification for something happened. A, a, a series of actions advancing the principle uh, 
tending toward a particular end. So these things that's going to begin to happen to you, he's going to cause you to know he's the cause. He's going to cause you to know that he is God. He's going to cause you to know he's the Genesis. He's going to cause you to know he's the root. He's going to cause you to know he is the origin in the seed. He is the mainspring in the base. He is the foundation in the seat, the seat of righteousness. He is the originator, the author, the finisher, the creator, the producer, the prime mover, the maker, the wellspring, the fountainhead. He will cause you to know he is the cause. Because that is the definition of cause. So these actions and these events are causes. And these definitions are bringing you to the cause, which is the Lord your God. Some you're gonna be some you're gonna be saved with fear, snatched from the fire, literally singed by the heat of wrath. Behold, the hunters and the fishers. I'm gonna say it in order: the fishers, and then the hunters are coming forth. Okay, how rapidly back to back he gonna do this? Only he knows. Okay. Evil shall hunt the violent man. There's hunters that's going to go after the wicked too. You already heard me give messages about some of them that's going to get pulled down. Leaders, politicians, crooked people. And Nancy Pelosi got a direct one. The Lord's going to visit her. And if those of you don't know what it means for the Lord to visit you, that could be good or bad. He can visit upon you righteousness or he can visit upon you wickedness. And I know it's wickedness because pride was the, what, what went into it. Okay. Psalms 140 and 11. Let, no, let not an evil speaker be established in this earth. Evil shall hunt the violent man to overthrow them. So those of you who are doing wicked, who are going your own way, doing your own things, thinking you don't have to, you have yet to come to Christ. Wicked is going to pursue. I mean, uh, evil is going to pursue every wicked man, every wicked woman. There will be no peace in their home. There will be no peace in their family. They're going to know, they're going to know what's the difference. And they're going to start to wonder. And that's when they come. That's when they're going to be receptive when the fishers and the hunters show up. Which don't even matter if you're receptive when the hunters show up. Because they're going to do what you did different. Anybody look at how, okay, you got somebody that's just slightly cooperating. And the cop come, they just go ahead and cooperate. And then you got the ones that's on their chin, on their neck. And the bounty hunters that have to remind them of, you know, who in charge. Spiritually, pretty much that's how it's going on. Okay? He will cause you to know that he is the cause. Okay, I read you that definition. Uh, to pursue and violent hunt the man. Why is this going to go forth? Okay, because people have gone their own way for a very long time. The Lord is slow to anger, plenteous and merciful. But when time begins to draw near, and even especially those of you who belong to him, you don't get it more generally. He, he shows you love and kindness. But when you keep going the wrong way, your chastisement is going to be rough. It doesn't matter that they ain't wrath. Do you care if they call it wrath or chastisement? Let me use this example. If two kids are sitting there and you pull out a belt, this one get this many lashes, this one get maybe a few more, and you look at both of them and you, you say to one, you got that for chastisement, you got that for wrath. Because we know when the wrath of the Lord is poured out, Different times, y'all. You hear the word wrath. You can't be thinking about the word, the wrath in the uh, uh, revelation because that's what it's going to be poured out without measure. There's vows in their bowl. When the wrath of God is poured out in revelation, y'all better listen to the words. It is without measure. There is no holding back. That's going to be terrible. Okay? Brother, you're being chastised. But you already know that a bounty hunters don't come for you, come for you the same way police do. Completely different kind of bringing in you about to get. If you ain't really figured that out in your mind, you're going to get brought in differently because time is running out. And the Lord is not willing for any to perish. And those who belong to him, he's going to drill you however you got to get broke down. Don't y'all understand that even when you pray for mercy, I already told you sometime, sometime people are going to be very sick because nothing else got their attention. And some of them are going to be sick all the way to death because it's the only thing that's going to get them into the kingdom. That's how hard some people are. That uh, The flesh that they weren't willing to give up to be burned, going to be burned through turmoil. Going to be burned through these trials and fires. Going to be burned, and they're going to be glad to see. Have you ever somebody, 
Have ever seen somebody that was running from the cops for so long when they caught her? They was like, ooh, I'm just glad this is over. Because they're going to be in that, that much turmoil, okay? And this is why. Because for the longest you have gone your own way, and now time is drawing near to an end. And those who have foreknew that he has ordained, that he foreknew that he has ordained to this great grace, ordained to this faith, ordained to this ministry, ordained to his love that have yet to come in, they finna get brought in, and some of it's gonna be rough. They're gonna go through rough things, they're gonna be saved. Okay? Some, these are the ones that's gonna be snatched from the fire. But the fishers are gonna go out with go out with great force. But they're going to still have rebuke because they don't burn a sword in vain either. But these are two breeds of uh, uh, workers in the ministry and workers of end time ministry. Okay. The fishers that's going out in the end and the hunters that's going out in the end ain't the same as the ones that's moving around now that y'all see just, just sweet all the time and w won't tell you anything because they're afraid to offend you. It ain't going to be them. They're going to be kingdom all the way. Okay, let me read Isaiah. This is why you have gone your own way. Why judgment will be eternal hell. Okay, Isaiah 53, 1 through 12. Okay, I'm just going to read this straight through. Who hath believed our report? Those of you who have just not believed the Lord at all. And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? The arm of the Lord. To whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? Don't question. For he shall grow up. For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, and at, excuse me, and as a root out of a dry ground. He has no form. Excuse me. And as a, a root out of a dry ground, he has no form, nor comeliness. And when he and when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire in him. Okay. Surely he bore our griefs. So you know you're speaking about the Lord. He is despised and rejected of men. A man of sorrows, acquainted with grief. He's acquainted with grief. And we hid as if, as if our face from him. He was despised, we were, and, and we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. Okay? But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we were heal okay verse six all we like sheep have gone astray everybody had gone astray we have turned away one to his own way everybody that went his own way and the lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all he laid all of all iniquity all of us did on one man who was god the flesh our lord verse seven he was oppressed and he was afflicted Yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter and a sheep before her, her shearers is dumb. So he opened not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment. And who shall declare his generation? Who shall declare his generation? Who's declaring? For he was cut out of the land of the living for the transgression of people. For the transgressions of people, he was stricken. And he made his grave with the wicked. He laid down with the wicked when he was all righteous. And with the rich in his death. He was with he lay with the wicked and with the rich, because you know he was in the rich man's tomb. Because he had done no violence, neither was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. That's how much the Lord wants to save you. It pleased the Lord to bruise him. He had put him, put him to grief when thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin. He shall see his seed. He shall prolong his days and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied by his knowledge. Mm. And shall be satisfied. By his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many. By his knowledge. That's Christ's knowledge. Uh, shall my righteous servant justify many? For he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore will I divide him a portion with the great. He's dividing him a portion with the great. And he shall divide the spoil with the strong. Boy, I go all day with that. Therefore he will divide him a portion with the great. That's Christ. 
and he shall divide his spoil with the strong, because that's his spoil, because he he conquered, because he had because he had poured out his soul unto death, and he was numbered with the transgressors, and he bare their sin. He was numbered with the transgressors. He was numbered. Oh my God, with the transgressors, and he bare the sin of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. Okay. That's the reason I put this in here twice. Let me see where I am. Okay. Let me read this in the uh, Passion. Okay. Who was truly believed? Who has truly believed our revelation? That's what I mean. Who has believed our report? He's giving you revelation. Who has truly believed the revelation of God that they're free and they're free indeed? That he bore all your sickness. He carried your disease. He died a death that he did not deserve. No gal was found in his mouth. Neither was there any violence found in him. Yet he laid and made his grave with the wicked and with the rich. All for you. And he said, who has truly believed our revelation? This is the revelation. To whom will Yahweh reveal his might, his mighty arm? He sprouted up like a tender plant before the Lord, like a root in parched soil. He possessed no distinguishing beauty or outward splendor to catch our attention. Interesting. Nothing special in his appearance to make you desire him. He was despised and rejected by men, a man of deep sorrow who was no stranger to suffering and grief. He, we hid our faces from him in disgust. Yep, they did. And considering him a nobody, not worthy of respect. Hmm. The sin bearer servant. Yet he was the one who carried our sickness and endured the torment of our suffering. We viewed him as one who was being punished for something he, he they viewed him as somebody that was being, he was being punished for something he himself had done. As one who was struck down by God and brought low. This is how they judged him. They thought that he must have did something. Okay. But it was because of our rebellious deeds that he was pierced. Yeah, yeah, that he was pierced, and because of our sins, that he was crushed. He endured the punishment that made us completely whole, and in his wounding, we were found, in his wounding, we found our healing. Like a wayward sheep, like a wayward, uh, wayward sheep, we have all wandered astray. Each of us had turned from every path. This is why. God's paths and chose, God's paths and chosen our own ways. Even so, Yahweh laid the uh, guilt of our every sin upon him. Okay? He was a surrendered servant with a rewarder. This, this is why this is going forth. After all the Lord God laid down, years of us, who going to believe our report? Who going to believe our report? Who going to believe the report? Turn for the kingdom of God. Because the, the preaching of the gospel and the kingdom, the preaching of the kingdom of heaven is two different things. We are getting ready to go into the preaching of the kingdom of God. The preaching of the gospel of the kingdom. There's a transition from the preaching of grace into the preaching of the gospel of the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is at hand. And the Lord is about to send forth the fishers in great abundance and the hunters immediately after. And we don't know in how rapid succession he's going to do it. Because these people are not going to be playing in the spirit of God. And many of us who are being developed up into these fishers and hunters. They're not new people on earth. New surrender. New people being brought over that's going to believe his report. And move forth in the power of God and greatness of his authority. And they're not going to deal with you like these people who are candy man preachers, who are sugar footers, who are candy coaters, who are tickling your ears. The fishers and the hunters are coming because he's going to cause you to know that he is the call. We have gone our own way so long. Those of you who belong to him, he's going to deal with you completely different. But even the hunters are going to, uh, even the wicked and evil is going to hunt down the wicked. But there's a hunter that's going after the righteous. There's a hunter that's going after those who he foreknew. There are hunters that are going after those who have been rebellious. There are hunters that's going to pursue. They're going to pursue you. And you heard what the word of God said. This is nothing that's going to be pretty. Okay? What's the word pursue? I know I found it. Oh, yeah. We can't leave that out. Evil shall hunt the violent man. I read that. Okay? The fishers. We already know what that is. The hunters, both wicked and righteous, okay? Hunters don't deal with you like fishers do, 
Okay? And even the fishers are coming with the power. For the kingdom of God is in word and in power. Like Paul said, shall I come with a rod or in meekness? But trust me, they are armed to come anyway. And they're going to be released to come both ways. And it would not behoove you to try to buck them. Because you're going to be dealing with the Lord. These are, this is different. Is to have the spirit and to know how to yield and operate and cooperate with the spirit is two different things. To where you have learned through obedience and through wisdom and instruction how to shoot your power rightly, how to aim your power rightly, how to handle the power rightly, and you are effective in the things of God. Hunters do not deal with you as fishers. And, but keep in mind, as I said, the fishers are bringing the swords too. Okay? Some save with fur. Some will be caused to repent by violence. Not violence that people of God are doing. Violence in the spirit. But some of, some of these people are going to spur some things and it's going to be the only thing to get their attention because time is that short and the Lord is not willing for any to perish. I know y'all think that the Lord go, he would rather draw you with the hope of his goodness. Rather, catch that. He would rather draw you with the hope of his goodness rather than the curse of that wrath. Singed by the fire of his wrath. He'd rather for you just to hearken and receive his goodness, receive his mercy, receive his salvation, receive all that the Lord, y'all just heard that I read that he did. And if we was the bullet point, there would be enough paper in the earth to fill, fill everything he did for us. Why? By laying his blood, his spotless blood. There was no blood in this earth good enough to, to, to pay what it would have took to redeem all of mankind. And he had to take that very blood that he shed her and present it in the heavenly tabernacle. This is going forth. There's a transitioning from this gospel of grace into the gospel of the kingdom. And therefore, in abundance, the fishers are going forth. And soon after, the hunters. The fishers and the hunters. Let me keep going. Definition of hunt. And that's why I read the scripture down. It's to pursue you. The pursuit and killing or capture of. I say this again. As I just read the scripture. Evil shall hunt the violent man and overthrow him. It does not mean everybody going to live. Some people going to get broke down all the way to the end, but it is to the saving of their soul. And some of the wicked people, yeah, they leaving up out of here. Okay? The pursuit to the end, that's spiritual because the wicked, you know, killing is something different, okay? Or the capture of. An, insta uh, an instance of searching for something. The activity of looking thoroughly in order to find something or someone. To chase away with, chase away, the wicked. With as, as with force. With, yeah, okay, I'll put that word in there. As with force. To pursue, don't even get me started, for food or sport. To, to, to pursue for sport. The wicked man, evil gonna hunt you down for sport. Okay? Also to hunt, to police, hello, to stalk, that, I know what they mean by stalk in the ministry, by, by in this world, y'all, but their eyes are everywhere, people just going to see you, you, you ain't going to know how they know what they know, they're going to know it, to track, to course, to search, to seek, or well, to seek a search for, to oscillate about at a desired speed. To position or to state to an undesirable extent. To pursue or chase relentlessly. Now I want y'all to catch what I said. That the hunters is going to be for. It's going to be the evil that's going to hunt the wicked. But there's hunters uh, by way of the spirit. That's going to pursue the righteous. Those who are sinned. Back down here to what I said. To keep, uh, keep being kind to those who waver in faith. Pursue those who are singed by the flame of God's wrath. Because it's going to start to hit them. The hunters and the fishers are coming. And they're not going to deal. The fishers are going to be bringing the sword as well. They're going to be sent out in uh, power of uh, the power of the Holy Spirit. Not bearing his sword in vain. Not sugarcoating the word nor dealing with you lightly. Ask Paul, should I come with a sword, a rod, or a meekness? It will be your choice. But behold, the fishers and then the hunters are pursuing. Right behind. Because you're going to get brought in in a different way. 
Many of you got to get brought in differently in order for your eternal souls to be saved. Some of your loved ones got to get brought in by the hunters and for the fishers, because I'm, the, the fishers I'm speaking of ain't gonna be these people with these general preaching y'all talking about right now. Which I'm not saying I'm one of them to general preach because anybody it ain't gonna be easy for you to sit under my channel if you if you are a serious uh, infamil baby. You you ain't gonna be you gonna be to sit in this word too long. You are gonna be getting cut and you gonna get offended instead of going thereby to receiving it as a purging rather than a cutting, receiving it as a pruning rather than a cutting. See, that's different between kingdom people. They can take a correction and receive it as a prune because they know they're gonna grow more. When you obey, it cut you. It wounded you. When you kingdom and you realize that that word hit you, you know you just got pruned. That means I'm going to grow. If you receive it. If you rebel against it, it's the, it's the opposite. Okay? I want y'all to hear this word. Because there was such a seriousness on me. Behold, the fishers and the hunters are coming. He will cause who? The people that's being hunted and pursued. He will cause them to know that he is the cause. You have gone your own way for too long. You have yielded to darkness for too long. He has given you time to turn around. And even those who belong, he, when he said he married to the backside, he ain't joking. It ain't, it ain't gonna always be pretty. I know everybody think it's just, you're gonna come, you're gonna hug it, you're gonna cry, and that's how you're gonna get brought in. It's not always gonna be so. Just like deliverance ain't pretty. Just like people, if you've seen them say they've been delivered from alcoholism or anything else, it is never pretty. But the end will justify the mean. You are to come and surrender to the Lord willingly. Because if you belong to him, there's nothing you're going to be able to do about it. He coming to get you. Or shall I say he's sending them to get you. And it's ordained. The fishers and the hunters are going forth in great force. And I want y'all to pay attention to the order the Lord said. He said, I will send the multitude of fishers first. But these ain't going to be the typical ones. And then soon after, the hunters. Because time is that short. We gon' they gon' check get your and y'all gonna think and you gonna have people that's religious saying that ain't holy. That ain't the love of God. Don't do that. Cause if you knew the Lord, you would know better. He's concerned about your eternal soul, not your feelings in this flesh. And when time is running out, you should see a great mercy that he would even send someone to snatch you out of fire. Beloved, take this message before the Lord. But it's prophetic. The multitude of fishermen going forth. And quickly after the hunters. And the hunters will not deal with you. The way the fishers did. But they both are from the Lord. Grace be with you, beloved. I love you all. Did you know that when you hit thumbs up, you enable more to be fed by the very message that just fed you? So share the spiritual meal, feed others, work a righteous work, work at evangelism by working the thumb. Thumbs up, feed more. Thumbs up, feed more. So into the good ground of preach be a voice not an echo, yet only as you have purposed in your heart. For God loves a cheerful giver. The truth, the truth of the word of God. Of the word of God. 1 Corinthians 9.11 reads, If we have sown into your spiritual things, is it a great thing if we shall reap your carnal things? Give only with purpose and cheer, for we desire fruit that will abound towards your account. We thank you for all of your support, seed of your time, seed of your prayers, and the purpose seed of your gifts. To give, visit our YouTube channel and click on the PayPal logo or go directly to PayPal using the following links or email preachbvne at yahoo.com. To listen to more messages and for the latest updates and offers, visit www.preachbvne.webs.com. Also view messages on the YouTube channel at www.youtube.com slash C slash preach be a voice not an echo ministry. Also like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. Do the work of an evangelist. Watch it, then share it. Beloved, we wish above all things that you will prosper and be in good health, even as your soul prospers. Grace be with you. 
Thank you for joining us today on Preach, Be a Voice, Not an Echo. We pray that you were encouraged and empowered by today's message. Until next time, we encourage you to hang on to God's unchanging hand and preach. Grace be with you.